Hello and welcome. I'm Lindsay Crane, and these are my retro craft dreams. Today, I am trying a new to me craft that I feel was somewhat ubiquitous in the 80s. I feel like I used to see it a lot, but never really gave it a second thought. And even now, it's kind of hard to know for sure how often those times were this particular craft because of its resemblance to the classic, more skilled craft of fillet crochet, or possibly even some types of lace making. I'm talking about lace net darning. If you've never heard of it, you've probably still seen it and just didn't give it a second thought like me. It's typically an all weight design, occasionally color blocked, I think, laid out on a grid netting, uh, usually with a contrasting color background fabric. I think it was prevalent in country style decor in the 80s probably surrounded by loads of lace trim. I'm not really sure where it comes from or how old it is, so I'm really curious as to the history and actual prevalence of lace net darning as a craft. So if you are interested in finding some of that out with me sometime in the future, let me know. Because it really doesn't seem to appear in the craft books in my current collection. There are references to embroidering on net or darning simple bars, I think I saw, but this style of a silhouette picture made entirely with darning stitches seems to be a very 80s thing. So with that said, let's get right into it. The kit I'm working today is 0479 Peach Lilies by The Creative Circle in 1987, designed by Marjorie Young. All right, so we've got a whole lot of stuff. Spool of thread. We've got our lace trim, two bundles of very, <laughs> very flat, uh, thread of some kind, thin strip. I'm guessing this is a, a, an additional ruffle. Instructions, the netting. Okay, there's a needle. Here's the pillow backing. Wow, all those years with the netting in there, it's like got a texture that it did not originally have. And then the pink has that same texture. It's printed though, like it's not a pink fabric, it's paint. <laughs> Quick look at these instructions. Lace net darning can be worked from right to left, left to right, from top to bottom or bottom to top. Just don't cross open spaces. An embroidery hoop is not necessary. If you do use a hoop, be sure the tension of the net has give. Oh boy. All right, yep, learning something new here. I really should have had two cameras for this because uh, <laughs> my expression right now, this is, this is not something I can do quickly. So I'm gonna, oh, here's the pattern. Thread included in kit, number three net darning thread, 12 yards, number five net darning thread, 31 yards. Yeah, this one is thicker. Okay, I feel like I'm in for it for some reason. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. So I quickly added an extra camera. We've got a proper microphone going now because I need to learn how to do this stitch with you and you know, I feel like you should be able to see my face for that because I'm all of a sudden like, whew, and wow, that is playing tricks on my eyes. <laughs> this is going to mess with my depth perception. Oh Lord. Let's um get a little better organized here. So I don't need any of that yet. Big chonky needle. Oh, rusty needle. Let's try my strawberry on that again. Instruction time. The front of the net has little O's on the thicker strands. These thicker strands should be held vertically as you work over the thin strands. So I, I don't know that I would call any of that O's. It's gonna go that way. I can at least see the weave of the fabric. That is messing with my eyes. <laughs> there are two stitches in lace net darning, the weaving or reprise stitch and the running or twall stitch. The weaving stitch is used to create a pattern by filling in the squares. The weaving stitch uses number five thread, which is the thinner thread. It can be worked over one square or as many squares as needed to complete a row on the graph. Start by coming out in the first square of the stitch to be worked. 
leaving a three inch tail. Okay, so the thinner one, that's this one. Then weave or darn over and under the number of threads needed to work the pattern. Weave the thread four times in each row as shown. Okay, so we're not like, you know, burying it anywhere. We're just leaving a tail and then weaving four times up and down. Be sure you have enough thread to complete a row. Do not stop in the middle of a row. Do not pull the threads too tightly or they will pull the net out of shape. The graph uses dashes to show the squares to be stitched. The dashes will show which direction to work your stitches, either vertically or horizontally. This one's gonna not be a quickie. Um, this one might take me a while. I'm feeling really intimidated all of a sudden. I don't know. I mean, it's new. This is what happens when you try a new craft, right? You feel intimidated and it's been a while since I tried something new because even when I did my first needlepoint, it wasn't actually new because I had done plastic canvas stuff before. So starting project, find the center of the net by folding in half horizontally and vertically, which is not how it has been folded for 30 some odd years. To begin, work entire design with single strands. This is like some rest of the effing owl stuff going on here. <laughs> To begin, work the whole design. <laughs> what is that? Okay, let's read that again. To begin, work entire design with single strands. Using number five net darning thread and the weaving stitch, begin by stitching leaf of lily. Continue until flowers and leaves are completed. I really do hope I like this at least a little bit though because I do have another one for Christmas. <laughs> So I have to like it at least enough to finish this one and do another one. Yeah, so that's the middle. Let me just mark the middle here with my safety pin. So it's gonna be this square, that square, and that square. So I need to start here. I don't think I like being down here. So maybe I'll just flip it. I'm gonna flip it. Got my tail. Now I can hold it properly. And we're here and we're going for three, we're covering three squares. So one, two, three. So we're over, then we need to go under, over, under. I'm about to do the fourth pass. So we're coming up, we need to go under, over, under. So now we're gonna come up here. Yeah, no, no, up one more. Okay, so we're traveling behind and now we're doing three squares from here. So we're on top, we're gonna go over, under, over, under, and up, yes? So like, it's not hard. Um, and if you like mending or want to practice mending, like, I mean, I'm sure this is the same basic thing. I, I think the biggest challenge is just going to be knowing where to travel the thread to make sure that you're still covering that corner, um, that it's not technically woven into, if that makes sense. It's not going to be something I can do in my chair. I'm going to have to do this here at the table with the chart. Um, which isn't always fun. But now we need to go up two, and I think I might need to bury it, maybe, if it's going all the way up here. Do I need to like flip it and embed it? All right, yeah. It sounds like I gotta bury it. Guess I'll do what it says. If I can wrangle this fabric. I need to like basically just go in this little bit of the weave that I cannot focus on. All right, where was I? On the back. Getting tangled up through this one, unless I'm like misinterpreting something, which is entirely possible. But you know, if I'm misinterpreting it, it's very likely that someone in 1987 misinterpreted it. Oh goodness, that's a fat needle. Whew, okay. All right, so we're going up to here. 
and then we're going down to that one. So we're going over, under, over, under, over, under, over. Oops, too tight. Well, it's looking like a leaf. Ooh. Is this like actual size? Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, that's really neat. Do you see that? I can check for accuracy. I can like make my eyes go trippy, but also check for accuracy by just laying it on the chart because the chart is actual size. That's kind of fun. It does say to leave a three inch tail and that's about what I have. So I'll take this to the back again. How do you make sure that that corner gets covered? Like if I had to go down again, it wouldn't be covered. I'm just gonna run that underneath that corner just so it doesn't go anywhere. My first thread's worth of lace net darning is still tripping out my eyes. I'm gonna iron this now before I start on the next thread and then we're gonna flip it to the montage. When you can just do the stitching, it actually works up really fast. It's when you have to figure out where to anchor it that it gets kind of tedious. The anchoring is the annoying part, so I'm trying to not have to do that as much. a quick update with a couple things that I have noticed. It can be very easy to like accidentally split these threads and that can mess up your weave. Unlike 
cross stitch and needle point where if you miss a square, you can just go back and fill it in. With this, if you miss a square, you have to undo it all because it has to be this continuous weaving. Okay, I don't dislike this. The actual stitching part is actually quite satisfying, but it gets really, I don't know, it's one of those projects that I end up just staring at instead of working on because somehow I just don't want to do it. <laughs> so this is going a little slower than it should. I think the main thing is um, every time I have to anchor the yarn behind to make sure it doesn't cross in front of an open square um, or, you know, weaving it in at the end, it's those parts get really tedious. Um, you know, it's much easier to run your cross stitch needle under a few stitches than it is to figure out where you can run this thread without it showing through to the front. So, um, yeah, I just end up staring at it a lot, but I'm making progress. And, um, you know, I think I like it enough to do the Christmas kit that I have eventually. And, you know, if I get the, if I see the other, if I see the blue one of this set of pillows, I'll probably buy it. But I don't think it's going to be something I go out of my way to do often. Um, you know, it's also a, a look. It's a certain look. I have got to this part of the last flower. I do need to work at the table so that I can have the chart more easily accessible and one of the things that I've really been noticing is that it just wants to move a lot so I've got my button jar here being an anchor Now, I don't know if that's the best thing to do, and it certainly isn't fun pulling it through with this giant chonky needle, but it's really the only place I can get it to be nice and secure. Okay, so I am officially on step three of this out of five. Um, so let's have a look at some more instructions. All right, so there's the flowers. So here we are. Work the inside border in outline stitches. See illustration number one below using number three net darning thread. And it looks like Every stitch basically is laid out for whipping around the vertical posts instead of going around a lateral thread. Stitch middle border in decorative running stitches, and it looks like we just, you know, follow the arrows and where it goes under, we go under. at the end of my thread but there's nothing here to weave it under to secure it we're on 
step five, work outside border in outline stitches using number three net darning thread. So I'll just be doing the same thing as this, except more annoyingly because I won't have any leaves or stems to bury them in. I think this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, tie with a single knot, I guess. And then whip stitch each of the tails to the back of the existing stitches. Now, sacrilege again. I think it might hide better in the corner. So if you look close, you can see them, but they're not noticeable. Unfortunately, my sewing machine isn't unpacked yet, so I couldn't turn it into a pillow at this time. I did put it in some stretcher bars so we could get a better look at what it looks like. So what did you think of lace net darning? I imagine if you enjoy weaving, it's right up your alley. That's certainly the part that I enjoyed the most and it was pretty satisfying. I would like to find if there's a better way to anchor the threads, when changing direction or going further distances because that really was the part that threatened to get old fast. And if I could do this craft without doing that, I would probably do it a lot. But that said, I can still see myself doing this again and will because I do have at least one other kit. I'm even a little tempted to see how some pop culture pixel art would look in this, in this craft. A uh, Super Mario mushroom might look kind of cute. <laughs> So what about you? Have you ever done lace net darning before? If so, I would love to hear your tips and techniques for when I get out my other kit in the future. And did you, did you like it? Did you do it once and, you know, never again? Or did you do it a lot? And if you have never done lace net darning, would you try it? Have I piqued your interest at all? I want to know that too. If you do try it, do let me know in the comments. I'd love to know how it goes and your discoveries and any tips or tricks that you figure out that I failed to. Tips and tricks, welcome in the comments. That's it for today's new to me craft. Thank you so much for watching. Happy crafting and I'll see you next time. Bye. Can't see my hair, but I'm sure it's being a weirdo. And I don't know how, but this, I think, is my third video in a row of a craft from 1987. Tying knots, it like feels like sacrilege. Every single stitchy craft that I have ever done says not to tie knots. And then here it's telling me to tie knots and then sew the tails down. I really miss my big table. Oh, I am matching this quite well, aren't I? Oh, that smells like it's old.